Here are seven things you can do if you failed an A or E exam to make sure you get a pass the second time around. Number one, remember your exam. Spend some time thinking about what you saw, how the questions were asked, the concepts that they, that they tested you on. Take notes. Don't share these with anyone, but these are your personal notes to use for your second time around. Two, go learn the things you missed. Uh, you're not going to see the same questions over and again, but you are going to see the same concepts. You're going to see similar details, similar sections from the contracts, that type of thing. So go learn the specific things that you missed. 3A, don't take any time off. If you've just failed an exam, you're probably as well prepared for the next one as you ever will be. And with the 60-day window before your retake, that is plenty of time to prepare for the second one. 3B, do take time off. If it's maybe your second or third fail, if it's toward the end of the year, if it's maybe in the summer you're about to go on a vacation, just take some time off, refresh, and start again when you're fresh. Uh, number four, do stay engaged with material. So even if you're not studying, try to learn something every day. Read the IBC every day, read graphic standards every day, read a little bit of Ching every day, read the contracts every day, 15 minutes a day just to learn something new until you're ready to actually start studying in earnest. Number five, uh, or number six, make a plan. So, you know, I'm a big believer that nothing happens without a plan. So when you schedule your retake, think about all the things you wanna learn between now and then make a study plan that actually schedules a day and a time to learn those things and then go do it. And number six or seven, depending on how you count 3A and 3B, um, celebrate yourself. Just being able to sit for this exam, the amount of work and effort that got into it, that got you from basically starting school until now, um, you know, it, you deserve congratulations. And just because you failed an exam, I know that's a frustrating experience and with the instant results where you you know spend four hours taking this test and then right away you see that you likely failed you don't really get to spend any time thinking about what you have accomplished just to be able to sit there so spend some time actually congratulate you know congratulate yourself um, and make sure you do recognize that just sitting for the exam is an accomplishment hey i'm ben this is hyperfine resources and tutorials for architects by architects Today we're talking about what happens when you fail an ARE 5.0 exam, and I'm sorry I've got to make this video, but with pass rates between 45 and 66%, it happens to a lot of good people. It happens to a lot of qualified architects who just are well prepared and you know somehow still wind up with the wrong result on an exam. Uh, also, I get this question a ton. You know, hey Ben, I just failed this exam. What should I do next? So these are some of the most common things that I tell people, um, you know, almost on a weekly basis of how to get over this frustration of a fail and how to prepare better for the next time. Uh, this might be a long video, but I've got timestamps uh, in the description down below of all the things I'm going to talk about. I already raced through it on the intro uh, and I also have it on blog form. So check out the description for all the links um, and other information and let's get started. All right. The first thing to do after you fail an ARE exam is to remember your exam. Write down as much as you can remember and very, very specific here. Do not share this with anyone. Don't talk about this in the office. Don't post it online. These are your personal notes. Sharing this stuff will get you in big trouble. Um, but the best resource you have for your next exam is your experience from the first one. So think about the questions you saw. Think about the topics you saw. Uh, the questions that you think you missed or didn't understand. Do you think given a little bit more time or less stress, less pressure, you could solve them? Uh, I remember after one of my exams, I, you know, I was thinking about it and there was a question about a beam and I was pretty sure I had to calculate the beam and I didn't remember the formula and I did the math wrong. And then as I was thinking about it afterwards, I was like, well, you know, I really didn't have to solve any equations. I just had to understand how beams work and how they bend. And so uh, with more time and a little bit less stress, I was able to sort of think through what the question was really asking me for. So see if you can identify anything like that with your exam. Um, so you can be better prepared for the second time around and then next time you're taking a test and you get a question that is tricky Maybe you'll have an idea of of how to sort of step back and think about an easier way to solve this or or maybe You're missing the point of what the question is really asking and it's really not as technical or You know as math based or whatever as, as you think it might be All right The number two thing is go learn the things you missed the actual specific things that you missed that you remember, you know, I always remember on my exams, I could always remember the questions that I thought I got wrong the best. And so you want to go learn those specific things. And 99% chance you are not going to see the same question again. So your goal is not to just start memorizing all the questions. Your goal is to start to learn the content um, and the concepts that, the, that you're going to be tested on. 
So if you missed a question about roof insulation or roof flashing or something, go to graphic standards, look at all the details about roof flashing and roof insulation. Because like I said, you're not gonna see the same question again, but I guarantee you're gonna get something on the same topic. You're gonna get something with roofs, something with parapets, with flashing, with insulation. Uh, and the little bit more that you know from remembering what you missed last time, you're gonna do better. Same thing with contracts. You know, if you missed a question about payment dates or you know, what's 14 days or seven days or anything like that, go read some specific sections of those AA contracts because 100% you're going to see similar content again. And so if you can go find the answer to the thing that you missed, you're gonna be sort of engaged with the material that the test writers were looking at, right? You're gonna be looking at the same sections of the contracts, the same section of Ching, the same section of graphic standards, whatever it is, you're gonna be looking at the same material that they were looking at when they wrote the question. All right, 3A, don't take any time off. If you fail an ARE 5.0 exam, you can take it again in 60 days. I think 60 days is a great amount of time to prepare for an exam. Uh, the thing you have going for you on your second chance is that you've already seen the exam and one of the most difficult things about these exams is sort of the unknown. You don't know what it's gonna be, you don't know the format, you don't know what's gonna be asked. And if you've seen it once, a lot of that sort of stress of the unknown goes away. Plus, theoretically, you've already been studying for a few weeks or a couple months. Uh, and so you are somewhat prepared, even though you didn't get the pass, you probably have learned a ton as a good base to start your next 60 days. So if you've just failed an exam, I think your best opportunity to pass it is in 60 days from now. So make a plan and work hard for 60 more days and then go take it again. All right, number 3B is the exact opposite of what I just said, but I think you should take time off if this is your second or third fail, or more specifically, if this is like the holiday season or it's the summer and you're about to go on vacation or it's a time when you're not really gonna get in good studying or it's gonna be stressful to deal with everything you've got going on in your personal life and studying, then just steer into the steer into the skid and don't study, you know, don't add that stress. Just take the time, enjoy the holidays, enjoy your family, enjoy whatever you're gonna do then come back refreshed. Um, so I'm a big believer, like November, December, don't study. Just take that time off. Do whatever you're doing in your personal life. When January 1st comes around, you've got that New Year's energy, that creative kind of spirit of the new year. Use that to, that's when you start studying again. Uh, you know, even when I passed my exams, I needed time off. So when you get through an exam, it's like a lot, it's a release of a lot of stress, a lot of pressure you're going through. Uh, and sometimes you just need to sort of accept that take time off, recharge, and, and go again. So figure out what is best for you, but I think taking time off is also a great way to get ready for the next one. All right, number four goes right along with this one is stay engaged with the material. So just because you're not studying doesn't mean you're not learning. You should try to spend 15 minutes a day reading the IBC, reading Ching, looking at graphic standards, reading the contracts, going on YouTube, and finding something that interests you. Um, and so even though, like I said, you're not literally studying an hour, two hours a night doing quizzes and note cards and whatever it is, um, it doesn't mean you're not learning. And I think one of the things that, that helped me out a lot with my exams is that, uh, yes, I was studying and studying is not really fun, but I also looked at it as a way to learn all these things that I didn't learn in school or that I wasn't learning in practice just because we were doing different stuff. Uh, and so I felt, okay, if I can learn about concrete and steel and if I can learn about mechanical systems, like I'll feel more legitimate and I'll be better at my job. And so it made it a little bit more enjoyable um, when I could spend some time learning these things that I was interested in. And then the byproduct was that I was doing better on the exams because I was learning more stuff. So even if you're not actually studying right now, um, according to like a study plan, you should still be learning something every day. Find something that interests you, spend 15 minutes a day and go learn it. Number five, make a plan. Um, I'm a big believer that nothing really happens without a plan or at least planning for something. So if you have your retake scheduled, think about everything you want to learn between now and then and make a schedule that actually lets you learn those things, right? You don't wanna to get to the end of the six day period or whenever your retake is gonna be and find out that you only learned half the stuff that you thought you were gonna learn. And you can sort of avoid doing that if you come up with a plan. So you schedule a day, a time, a night, a week, whatever, to learn each thing. Think about what you wanna learn, think about what you need to know to feel confident for your exam. Look at the resources you have, see what's in them, spend some time just browsing through them, and then come up with a plan that gives yourself a time and a date to learn each specific thing. And it can be a rough outline, you don't have to know exactly what pages you're gonna do, but you can say, okay, these next three days I'm gonna learn about concrete, or these next three days I'm gonna read the A201, or whatever it is. 
has to have a date and a time for you to learn it and then go do that. I've got a couple free study plans on my website for PPD and PDD that I made for myself and some other people. You can find some more on the NCARB forum. Uh, you can make one yourself and send it to me for some thoughts, but you need to have a good plan to get you from now until when your retake is. All right, number six or seven, depends how you count 3A and 3B, but you gotta celebrate yourself. You got to appreciate the fact that you sat for an exam, you prepared for it, and you took the test. Even if it became a fail, um, you know, a lot of work went into just being able to sit for that exam. And it's tough now with this instant feedback. You know, I'm, I'm old enough that we had to wait a day and actually even the 4.0 exams, you had to wait two weeks before you found your results. And I think this is a lot better than finding that, that instant result because if you're taking PPD or PDD and that's like a five hour exam and you've been studying for eight weeks and then you go and take this test and then in one instant you see likely fail, um, I can imagine that's unbelievably frustrating and the fact is it doesn't give you time to reflect on the fact of how much you've learned and how much effort you've put into it um, and there's benefit in all that time right it's not it's not a waste you didn't lose anything you happen to not pass an exam this time you'll get through it eventually but just the fact that you were sitting for the exam is accomplishment so you need to you know deal with the frustration of the fail but spend some time to just congratulate yourself and say, you know, you've got this far. There's a little bit of a setback. We'll get it next time. So if you sat for an exam, good job. Congratulations. Um, you worked hard to get there. This one happened to be a fail. Don't worry about it. All right. And that's it. Six or seven things you can do if you failed an ARE 5.0 exam to prepare and do better the next time around. I'm Ben. This is Hyperfine. Please check out hyperfinearchitecture.com. I've got tons of free ARE resources, some ARE study material that I made, uh, and other professional development resources for architects from Revit training, entrepreneurship, all kinds of stuff. See you guys next time.